Today I have come to El Fondo Natural Park. The main aim for today is to do some wildlife bird photography. But as always, I'll be open to any scenes or images that grab my attention. I thought I'd also take this opportunity to talk about why for this particular trip, I've chosen to leave my longest focal length lens, which might be the obvious lens for wildlife photography, at home. And instead, I've just brought the lightweight stuff. Hope you'll enjoy the video. If you do, and you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe before you go. So welcome to El Fondo Natural Park. It's also called El Hondo. One's a Valencian name, one's a Spanish name. It's a beautiful place. I've been here a number of times before. I've used it as a landscape photography location, typically early in the morning, and I've also used it for doing some wildlife. Now, the last time I came here, I brought my old Nikon D810 with the big uh, 150 to 600 lens to try it out as a wildlife photography solution. It's not ideal, it's, uh, the technology is a bit old and the autofocus etc doesn't really live up to modern standards. But nevertheless it was a useful tool for doing some wildlife photography. And when I came here today and I was thinking about doing some wildlife my first thought was I'll bring the big Nikon and the 150 to 600 lens. But then I started to think about what this place is like and where you can actually shoot the wildlife from. And I rethought it because I decided that maybe that camera system wasn't going to be the best for this location and maybe the kind of images that I want to do today. So uh, immediately that I've got here, we've got some flamingos around and I'm going to try and get some shots of them. I think I might have got a shot there of a flamingo scratching its neck with its foot. This would be quite cool. So why did I choose to bring this camera and this lens rather than the bigger camera and the longer lens? So just to put it into perspective, the 150 to 600 lens obviously has a 600 millimeter focal length. This 
fully extended is only 200 millimeters although this is a 1.6 crop so that's a field of view equivalent of 320 mil but still it's half the range of the 150 to 600 and the 150 to 600 although it's on a full frame it's 36 megapixels opposed to 24 and that means that i've obviously got a much more crop potential on the other system than i have on this one so it seems illogical to choose this rather than the other one but there are good reasons why <laughs> let's start off first of all by talking about that Nikon setup that I've got. The Nikon D810 is a fairly old technology camera nowadays and it's quite big, it's quite heavy. The 150 to 600 lens is also quite big and quite heavy so it requires quite a lot of holding. You've either got to put it on a tripod or a monopod or get a solid grip on it to stand any chance of getting sharp images. It doesn't have a flip or tilt screen, it's a fixed screen. If you're going to shoot with that camera, you either need to be able to bring the viewfinder or the screen up to eye level or get your eyes down to the level of the viewfinder or the screen in order to be able to compose and focus the image. Also with the big Nikon, if I'm going to be fair, the live view autofocus on it is pretty bad. The autofocus through the viewfinder is great but the live view autofocus is not great, it's slow uh, and in any situation where there's any lack of contrast it really doesn't work very well. So it's not the greatest for shooting live view and again that then brings us back to either getting the viewfinder to the eye or the eye to the viewfinder to shoot. Here the places that you can shoot the wildlife and the birds from are all above the water. They're all elevated up. I'm standing on a wooden platform at the moment. And of course, ideally for a lot of the photography where you've got birds in the water, you really want to have the camera lower down, closer to the water. If I had the Nikon with the 150 to 600 lens and I'm trying to hold that low down, and trying to compose the image and trying to focus it's almost impossible to do yes i could drop a tripod over the side into the water and have the camera on that but it's not exactly a very flexible situation whereas with this one i can actually get the camera pretty low down i can actually with a reasonably fast exposure time i can shoot one-handed even fully zoomed in and still get sharp images. So that's why I decided to bring this and today I really want to try to have images that are not just close-ups of the birds. They, you know, they have some of the environment in as well. Also, because the lenses on this setup are so light, and I'm travelling really light because I want to be able to you know, be agile and flexible, no big backpacks or anything. I can also carry my wide angle lens with this. So if I see anything that I think is worth shooting wide angle, I can do that as well. I will just mention one other thing. I have a strap on here. I'm not normally a big fan of straps. Um, but the reason I've got this is I don't actually have a bag to put the camera in. I've also got to manipulate the tripod with the... Uh, the uh, video camera on so I've got this on just so that I can kind of stick it on my shoulder or over my head like this when I need both hands free um, but as I said normally I'm not a big fan of straps sometimes you can't get down low which is a shame but nevertheless we can get a little bit lower <laughs>
wide angle shot, I think. Okay, the heat is now starting to get to me. So it's time to uh, pack up and head for home. Today I chose lightweight. I chose agility and flexibility over focal length. I couldn't get the subjects as big in the frame as I would have done with my uh, long lens, the big heavy kit. But there were compositions and images that I captured today with this that I would not have been able to do or not been able to do without a lot of hassle. <laughs> with the big camera and the big lens. Some of the images I was shooting, I was hanging down, hanging over the railing or hanging through the railings and holding the camera with one hand. There's no way I would have got sharp images doing that with that big setup. But with this one, so far it looks like they have. So I think I've made the right choice. Just goes to prove sometimes that longer focal length isn't always the best thing. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new here. And uh, as always, thank you very much for watching and until next week, bye.